So, the first spoiler review, and if you guys, if I didn't make it clear, these are all spoiler reviews. So if you haven't seen um, any of any of the following, uh, all of Moon Knight, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, uh, Miss Marvel episode one, uh, Obi Wan Kenobi episodes one through four, and Stranger Things four volume one, then uh, you can skip around. You know these will all be uh, individual spoiler reviews. Um, and you can listen to whatever one you want. Obviously, there will, like I said, will be separate videos coming out over the next couple days uh, of those of those reviews. So if you want to watch them separately, you can. Um, but again, these will be full spoiler reviews. This is going to be the only time I say that, so just you know keep that in mind. Let's talk about Moon Knight. Uh, so Moon Knight was a show that came out, uh, I believe, in mid March, uh, mid to late March and uh, continued all the way basically up until Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Now, Moon Knight was a show that just looking at the trailers, I was just so excited for. Um, you know, it promised that kind of uh, gritty action you know, with, with look, uh, looking at this image, like the psychological thriller with the mirrors and the, the split personalities and, and the multiple identities and, and the intrigue. And then you also had the sort of cosmic side to it, like here with the uh, the Moon Knight costume and, and that scene at the end of the first trailer of him uh, really beating up that, what we know now to be sort of a, an Egyptian spirit jackal or whatever uh, from Amit. Um, in that museum bathroom and you also had you know Khonshu and and everything like that so i mean really um i th i had thought and I, I i think this with almost every single mcu show to be quite honest and i think they do a good job with this we'll talk about that more with miss marvel um of differentiating their shows right like every show is so wholly unique and so wholly different that i I just, you know, every time a trailer comes out, even She-Hulk, which, by the way, I won't talk about the She-Hulk trailer in much depth. You can go to the community tab of my YouTube channel to check out my thoughts on the trailer. Um, I, I didn't love the trailer. I really didn't. Um, but you can't deny how different it looks from everything else in the MCU, a legal procedure. Uh, Moon Knight being the psychological uh, thriller uh, with some supernatural elements and Miss Marvel being a teen comedy coming of age, um, all with sort of that superhero tilt. And it I was just super excited. Uh, the first couple episodes were phenomenal. Uh, to me, Moon Knight episodes one and two are some of the best MCU content I think we've seen in quite a while. Um, I would, you know, I, I said the same thing about Loki episodes one and two, to be fair, uh, but I do stand by that. You know, I recently actually did rewatch all of Loki. Uh, my thoughts haven't changed a whole lot on that show. This isn't a Loki review, but I, you know, I promise this is relevant in the sense that. Uh, Loki was wildly inconsistent, right? It started out super strong, and it really took a nosedive. It kind of went back up, and then it went back down. You can go watch my reviews for Loki, all the individual episodes on the channel. Um, so, you know, it's kind of sad because I watched the first two episodes of Moon Knight, and I go, yeah, I mean, this show is is really good, right? Can it last? And... I mean, we'll, we'll talk about this in just a little bit, but to that ef to that effect, it, it seems like Marvel is almost following a trend, you know, having really strong opening episodes like WandaVision did, like like Loki did, like Hawkeye kind of did, Falcon Winter Soldier kind of did, um, Moon Knight did, and Miss Marvel does so far, uh, kind of dipping the third episode. Um, to me, the third episode of WandaVision, not as, not as great as the first two, uh, Loki, I really didn't like the third episode, I don't even remember what the third episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier was, to be fair, um, was that on Madripoor? I don't remember, um, third episode of Hawkeye, don't really remember, that might have been the Echo episode, um, third episode of Moon Knight was the one with, uh, uh Midnight Man, rest in peace, um, to the actor who, who played him, he, he passed away just before the show came out, that's really quite a shame. Um, really quite tragic, but, um, yeah, and then the third episode, so the third episode happens, and I'm like, okay, you know, this, this show is, is, is good, it's fine, um, like, not the show, this episode, um, and then we go to episode four, and it's sort of this tomb raiding adventure, which a lot of people really loved, um, I wasn't as big of a fan of it, just because it was such a tonal shift from the first few episodes of being that psychological thriller, um, I'm willing to sort of, well, I, that's not to say that I don't appreciate a good tonal shift in a show. I think that it can work very well, like WandaVision did, of course, but it was very intentional in that series. Uh, episode four of Moon Knight kind of felt like it was just, you know, sort of a 
tonal shift for the sake of a tonal shift. Um, and then it kind of goes into the, where's that picture? There we go. And the asylum, right? And it, okay. So I, I mean, I have a few thoughts about the asylum, but just to just the, the, the long and short of it is I thought it was a really interesting concept if they were able to explain it correctly, because the idea that this all might have been taking place in Mark Spector's head, or that there is some sort of underworld duality here with episodes four and five, or that the real world is the real world, I thought, okay, it's a really brave concept. It's a really interesting idea. If you can explain this really well, I'm on board. This has the potential to be one of the best MCU shows ever. We got... Th no, not that. Wait, where am I going? Uh, we got this instead um which we'll talk about in just a second but um the fact that they weren't able to really explain what happens here and and if you guys have like a really robust explanation of the asylum and what it was really supposed to represent please let me know in the comments i understand that this is some sort of manifestation of the underworld in mark specter's head what i don't quite understand is really the dr harrow part of it how what what is that supposed to represent because the show gives off so many mixed signals like when he gets drugged um it seems to be an indication that the this asylum that we're seeing in this picture is because of the medications um and then the you know obviously dr harrow is trying to talk to him about all these sorts of things that aren't real like the hippo he's like oh it's a hippo rhinoceros or whatever that's funny um and then he goes back to that, you know, that that version of reality at the very end of the show. And I I just couldn't help but but wonder what that really was about. You know, it's like, what what are we supposed to be? What are we supposed to make of that? Is that sort of a, a way of him coping? Like his mind trying to say that this isn't real and then him finally accepting, that, no, this is real. I, I don't know. Part of me had really hoped seeing that, that we would kind of stick to this really dark reality of, of nothing is real. And this is really just some guy who's dealing with mental struggles, mental health, mental health struggles. Uh, the MCU wouldn't do that. Not in full. Obviously episode five of the show is, is amazing because of, of Oscar Isaac and, and the way that they portray disassociative identity disorder in such a, you know, respectful and, and, and sensitive way. But, um, just, just the idea that Marvel, still has to have Moon Knight the character be a part of the MCU even though this show is disconnected you know that Moon Knight's going to show up in the Halloween special or Midnight Suns or whatever and it kind of prevents the show from being it just a well-rounded you know connected show to be quite honest so you, you know that was a bit of excuse me that was a bit of a bummer um to me honestly and yeah I just it's it's hard for me to kind of you know accept that this crazy twist happens when they weren't really able to to explain it well in my opinion uh and then we we get this and look giant cgi monsters battling in the sky it, like we you know all of the mcu finales have not been amazing let's be honest um i i think the wandavision finale even the wandavision is amazing in my opinion was not great. The Falcon and Winter Soldier finale was pretty lackluster, in my opinion. Loki finale, I really didn't like. Hawkeye finale was just okay. And this is just another okay finale to what could have otherwise been just a phenomenal show. By the way, nothing to take away from Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac deserves an Emmy for this show. I, it is just some of the best acting I've ever seen in my life. And, um, the fact that he just really went for it in that way, I I just cannot applaud him enough. But um, seeing Amit and Khonshu battle it out as giant kaiju in the middle of Egypt, it, it really took some of that bite out of the show that it had. Um, and I just, I felt a little bit dissatisfied with the ending. You know, we'll talk about another show uh, later on in this episode that really knows how to stick the landing. And that's what really makes it just that much better of a show in Stranger Things. Um, the Marvel shows just really haven't done it. And that's why I, we're what, five live action shows in going into a sixth. And I, you know, I can't help but be nervous every time I see a great first episode because I go, what are we heading towards? You know, like what, where are we going? Um, is it going to be a, a massive disappointment yet again? I don't know. 
We'll have to see. Uh, we'll get to Jake Lockley at the end of this segment, but um, I wanted to touch on a couple other characters. Obviously, Arthur Harrow. Ethan Hawke was just wonderful. Um, he brought that charisma. I, I didn't love how he just ended up having his staff and shooting laser bolts at the end of... Um, what is it of of the the series the series finale? He was just kind of you know shooting purple laser bolts out of his staff, and that was a little disappointing. But Ethan Hawke gave one of the more charismatic performances as a villain. I really wish they did explore him more as a character. I you know again we've talked about this before. The six episodes have to have to stop. It has to be at least eight, if not nine, ten episodes long, and each episode has to be at least forty five minutes long. I don't care, Marvel. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit. No, actually, I'll talk about this now. Part of the problem with the MCU shows is that there's too many of them. And duh, there's too many of them. But one of the underlying problems with that is that, look, by by having too many shows enter production at once and having them kind of churn out like pieces of content, it doesn't allow you the time to really develop a story and really develop characters the way you want them to. Like Stranger Things took three years to come out, Stranger Things 4. And it shows because it shows the level of of care and quality that has been put into that one show versus these 10 shows that are coming out over the next two years. Um, It's a side point, but I think it makes itself known here as well with Ethan Hawke. Uh, Now, May... Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Um, I don't have it up here. I, I don't want to try to butcher it, so I'm just going to call her May or Layla. Um, the actress who portrays Layla, I think she did a good job. Um, a lot of people were really raving about her performance. I thought she did a very fine job, very good job in the role. And I actually really, really do like that they, they um, made her a... a uh, gave her a leading role as the Scarlet Scarab, I believe, is what the uh, superhero alter ego is. I think that that's really great. Um, I think that if they had kind of just left her as the the love interest, um, the sort of determined love interest who has a past with with the main character, it, it would have been a little, it would have been much more um, boring and and just you know just another cliche thing to put in a superhero project. But the fact that they gave her powers, while also kind of being ironically a cliche superhero thing. I think worked. I think worked well. Uh, I was actually very happy to see her kind of suit up here with to to wear it and have this really cool costume. I hope uh, that she and Mark kind of get to go on some adventures in the future. I don't know if that's possible anymore with the whole Jake Lockley thing, but uh, I I think she did a good job. I think Layla was was a good character, not a great character. I think um, that the actress May did a did a really good job uh, with what she was given. So I was happy about that. Um, and finally, before we head out on to no i'll keep i'm going the other way where am i going with this uh before we yes okay before we end uh this spoiler review and move on to dr strange um in the multiverse of madness um and i by the way guys i understand that i'm really late on these reviews like i said at the beginning of this video um i you know this is just about me putting my thoughts out there for you guys to hear if you guys even care to hear about it if one person listens to it if nobody listens to it that's fine it's just me talking about my thoughts so that's why you know i'm still talking about these even though it's been about a month since they've come out but here they are so um jake lockley uh i part of me is is really intrigued by the the decision to have sort of the final battle with harrow and moon knight kind of be off screen with jake um Part of me also thinks that this should have been part of season one, and season one should have just been, like, 12 episodes, honestly. Um, so part of it intrigues me. Part of it really frustrates me, to be quite honest with you. Um, and, I, you know, I think that if they're going to explore Moon Knight in a season two that is just Moon Knight still, I think that's cool. I think if Moon Knight next appears in Midnight Suns or something like that, that this just becomes very confusing to me. It's not like one of those Baron Mordo post credit scenes where you kind of can just leave it there for five years. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, it's one of those things that you kind of need to pick up, right? Because this is what's happening. You know, this is the character now uh, in the body or whatever, whatever's going on. So yeah, I mean... On the one hand, you know, all the theories about Jake did and Jake's coming and Jake's that like it, it didn't the, the longer the show went on, the less it made sense um, to kind of have it sort of be the day, deus ex machina that comes in at the end to save everybody and, and defeat Harrow uh, is interesting. Uh, I don't know if I liked it necessarily, but I do think it's an interesting choice. And I think that, uh, you know, if if anything, if I got anything out of the show, 
it is that Oscar Isaac did gave one of the best performances I have ever seen in my entire life. Um, and that I believe that no matter where he shows up next in the MCU, um, as Moon Knight or in, in, in other projects, I'm just going to be so excited to see him again. So um, that's sort of my thought. Those are sort of my thoughts on, on the Jake Lockley thing. But overall, um, I think the show had potential to top WandaVision. I think ultimately it will still nestle very firmly towards the top third of the MCU, which is now some 35 projects. Um, and that is no small feat, by the way. The top third, the top 10 to 15 projects are, in my opinion, phenomenal. Um, but I think that it could have been more. And I feel like I'm saying this with every single MCU show at this point, and I feel like a broken record. Miss Marvel, uh, spoiler alert, started out really strong, in my opinion. We're just going to have to see where it goes. I'm going to have to believe it when I see it. You know, when I see an MCU show, stick the landing. Um, and Moon Knight certainly wasn't the show to do it, even though I really liked it. So those are my thoughts on Moon Knight. Uh, let me know what you guys think about Moon Knight in the comments of the podcast uh, video on YouTube or on the comments of the spoiler review itself.